Did you put this secretary? Mr. Eric, you're much welcome. My name is Nerio Kapus, and I'm coming to the post of Deputy Publicity Secretary of the Police Union Society. Um, I come before you in this open air campaign to tell you what I stand for and what I think is the Police Union Secretary of the Society. My slogan is property. And it's a word that comprises of three characters that I stand by. Number one being commitment, hard work, and integrity. As publicity secretary, if you give me your mandate, then I promise to bring this to the society. And I promise that you have a law society that is open to each and every one of you, that is free to communication and public to each and every aspect that you have to bring to the table. So that said, I ask for your mandate, come Friday. Thank you very much. I will now call Ahmed Singh, the Public Secretary. I don't know what it is. So, I will call the Deputy Organizing Secretary to come.
I want to make sure that um, I want to make sure that I'm meaning directed to producing sustainable academic academics to the legal profession. So I kind of seek for your vote. Um, my slogan is uh, very robust, it's coming from the book of the Chairman, 28, 13, which says the Lord will make you the dead and then the tail, which means that we are all meant to live at the top and not at the bottom. A vote for me, a vote for you, to represent you. Come, thank you much, in my first to your vote, because I don't want to see the air. Transparency and accountability. 
I want to believe that all of us here are the heart of all the society here. That the society has become like second family to each one of us. So we would like to see it strike for the best and hit the blossom of the right. I would ask each one of us to come the 10th of March, what we do for our transparency and accountability.
now going to invite the next candidate in the speaker's position. Uh, Madam Fatou Gaston. Thank you. 
I'm saying I just um, make the head of it. We all know that no school has a prestige that commands. Yes. We all know that, right? Yes. yes. And this is high time that we really focus on making that come to light. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I only come here to request that you entrust us with your vote come that day so that we can do this together with my colleagues. Amen. Thank you very much. I may be waiting for you.
fight for it, we can indeed make it happen. Uh, I will tell you on three points. One, that is, we have always had the problem of missing marks. This will be the very last time I'm hearing this. Many of you, you need the law, what you are actually doing very 
internship from Lofa. So I do not get his question. Have done internship from local. Yes, uh, and maybe since you don't get the question, I can ask it again. What is happening because of now? Is it that internship, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know whether I was misled by the public, but to the best of my knowledge, internship was scrapbook. It is no longer something that students do as a graduation requirement. And therefore, how are you going to provide that list to help a student at UC? What I am saying, ladies and gentlemen, is not for the faculty. Okay, I am bringing it on a personal basis because during the long holiday, ladies and gentlemen, many of us were doing internship, and that is for sure. And it is not a lot of that that sent us to that internship. So I am bringing the list not for the law faculty, but for the law students. Not 
very big token, which I can't get as well. And uh, I think I'm, I'm ready and very much committed to run to all avenues possible to fundraise money. This is because I'm quite sure that there are very many opportunities that have, been, have not been explored, but I'm very much willing. This comes in concert with very many well wishers and partners, different law firms, different organizations that I place that I think we can talk to and share our interests yeah. and different agendas. And I think that the leaders of the leaders of the two powers shall come up with very brilliant ideas and a very brilliant agenda that will serve the good purpose of society. And I'm sure that the partner will tell you. I want those things that you have in mind that can embrace the society. Uh, What other ideas? I think the other idea is uh, encouraging the membership, the body, the membership body of the society to pay the subscription fee. Because I think from subscription, we can gain a lot of funds for the society. What techniques are you going to employ to make sure that you publicize the society if you are not yet publicizing the election? Um, well, this this question, this question essentially is, what do I plan to do to publicize the society more? Now, for starters, you can see, or I hope it's evident, that speech is not, is not alien to my character. So I do not have an issue with stepping up to advertise the society. Number two, there are very many different um, uh, areas in which we can advertise the society. We already have Twitter, we already have... We have not yet utilized areas such as TikTok. I don't know how we can as yet. But these, these, are, these, are, these, are areas, these are areas in which we can advertise the society's activities, which will help our finance secretary develop funds for the society. I'd like to inform you that. Can we have one? I'd like to pass out a word of caution to all of us. Let us prevent ourselves as much as possible from interacting with the candidates as the debate is going on. You may think you have Googled answers and you're giving it to them to come in. So let us try as much as possible not to interact with them. Um, I would request the presidential candidates to turn off their phones as I want to believe that your men and a woman of integrity and you are there to this question that please turn off your phone so that you don't oh I can come and collect the phones if you feel if you trust me with them you can go on. but please turn off your phones and then just the main reason you are here is to listen to them we may get excited and clap for them, but let us listen to them, listen to their words, listen to what they have to tell us, because it's best for that that we can decide whether to give them our votes or not. So thank you so much, and uh, you're please welcome. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. In the presence of our new president, the Kiel government, all protocols of our, our moderator, Mr. Bayan, Ms. Shama, the aspirants, students, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Douglas Dragonian. I am running for the position of president. That said, around the globe, oftentimes what informs schools of law is a society. So let's take a look at Harvard Law, Harvard Law Society. It is one that informs, or what, one that depicts, the, one that gives us the symbolic of what is, in, what is in the students. Coming back to Africa, let's just look at Strathmore in Kenya. What exactly their law society is all about? Bible. One that pushes an agenda for the students. That said, let me bring you back home. Let's look at the 
benchmark at the moment is Macquarie University. It's one that has a vibrant society. And then we come to GCU. It's unfortunate that we have first quarter of first, but nonetheless, we are here to rebuild and restore. I write on an agenda that looks at very practical things. Practical things that looks at rebuilding and restoring the society. Restoring the society to make it vibrant, to make it strong, that would depict the real students of Uganda Christian University in Mukono. And that agenda is one that focuses on three practical achievable agendas. One, that focuses on revamping and rebuilding the UC Law Journal. Two, one that focuses on us having a sustainable legal meaning. And three, one that looks at mentorship. And the mentorship that we're focusing on is one that is two percent. Maybe to give you a, a synopsis of what those three practical agendas are. Let's start with the first one. The first one being restoring or revamping the UCU Law Journal. You know, the UCU Law Journal is one that is meant to harness students' writing abilities. And all of us here know, as we are learning, as we are learning friends, and our learning colleagues here, actually know what exactly it means for us to live or get out of law school with very good writing capabilities. And it's a law society supposed to give us that platform to harness our writing abilities. And that's why we say we build and restore, to give us a platform to help our students harness our writing abilities. Let's focus on the second agenda. The second agenda that looks at restoring and rebuilding the law society. And that's an agenda that looks at having a sustainable legal clinic. A question was asked to our finance minister, the incoming one, Mr. Duncan, yesterday, that how does he intend, or what mechanism does he look at to see that the society has funding? The question is, the fact is, our law society does not have a sustainable source of funds. The Constitution, the United Law Society Constitution provides for subscription fees, for partnerships, among others. But that's, in, that, that's only incumbent on the President to see that he's in position with this scheme, to be in position to be there to get the resources. But then, to address the issue of a legal plea, let's start from the first issue, us having a sustainable legal plea. Now, how are we going to get the funding? Let me just give, let, allow me to juxtapose two things here. Let's look at Macquarie University. Macquarie University at the moment has pillar, and that is public interest legal clinic. And how does pillar run? Pillar runs on the funds that is being provided by development partners. And who are those development partners? These are development partners from DGF, unfortunately they closed. These are development partners from Redwood Law Project, among others. But let's ask ourselves. UCU is an institution that holds a profound name out there. An institution that is well known for producing vital lawyers and all vital lawyers here. But it's unfortunate that we do not have any legal clinic. But then we are here to rebuild and restore. And how do we do that? Having a legal clinic is something that is meant to help all of us as students here. But the three stakeholders that benefit from us having a legal clinic. And who are those stakeholders? The stakeholders are you sitting in this room. You and I, the student. That is the first stakeholder. Who is the second stakeholder that benefits? The second stakeholder that benefits is the institution. And who is the third stakeholder that benefits? The third stakeholder that benefits is the community. Let me show you how the student benefits. You and I here are all looking to get our bachelor's degree. But that's not enough. Employers are looking for people with experience. And that experience is supposed to be provided for us by a society that thinks about us. And that is what we're here to do. To provide opportunities to help us have something on our CV. You may have a 4.0 GPO, and you may have a 3.6 GPO, and someone who is with a 3.6 GPO with relevant experience is in position to be taken out and let the person with a 4.0 GPO who has no relevant experience is strong. What does that mean? That we as the Law Society of Uganda Christian University, as president, I will be in position to provide an avenue that would help us all the students have something on our resume. Let us look at the second step holder. And that second step holder be the institution. As I say, Uganda Christian University is quite known for its vibrancy and producing very elegant and good lawyers as you see, such as our moderator here and Mr. Yumi himself, among other people who cite out. But then, we have been known for moods among other activities. How about it's time for us to be known for helping the community in terms of good service? Because the institution will benefit in terms of name, which brings me to the third stakeholder, and that is the community. You understand when we were joining law school, all of us young in our panels, crying and saying we want to fight injustice in our communities. But how many of us are fought injustice in our communities today? 
Simple question. How many? Quite few. Most of us are just focusing on getting the degree and getting out and back and securing the bag and that's it. But what about that dream that we once had of helping the community? And that dream can only be achieved if you have a sustainable legal clinic and an end that great as your president in this the board Those are the things the call Let's go to the third agenda that looks at us having a vibrant, revamped and sustainable society. The third agenda that would touch all of us as students of law. The third agenda that focuses on mentorship. And what kind of mentorship are we talking about here? My able colleagues here came up and talked about mentorship. But me as the president, with the agenda that we all share, let me show you how this mentorship is, 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 is meant to help all of us. As I say, the mentorship is two facets. One that looks at academic excellence and one that looks at the career guidance. Let's look at academic excellence. I'm about to conclude. Let's look at academic excellence. Academic excellence is one when we join your school, we all come here not knowing how to make cases. And who is supposed to be there to help us? Who is supposed to be there to support us? Who is supposed to be there to see that we succeed in our degree? The law society. It's unfortunate that most of us here when we join your school, we didn't have that experience. And I would love for us to have that experience changed. For our brothers and sisters coming behind us to create a cohesion that will benefit all of us. And that's what we're looking at academic excellence. Conclusively, one that looks at career guidance. As I said, we are all students of law. And being students of law, we ought to be nurtured. We ought to be cared for. We ought to be talked to by people who have done it, who have seen it, who have made mistakes. And this is only possible if you have a society that brings to you people who have done it, people who have seen it, people who have moved through the mistakes and guide us and make us the better leaders that we want to be, the better lawyers that we want to be, and the better citizens we want to be for this country. And with that, it's the manifesto that I come with. One that focuses on three things, among other activities that I will be in to work with this. As I say, come 10th of March, vote for them that we expect for president, for we care to renew and restore the society. Thank you very much. My name is Akomuza Natasha, and I'm vying for the position of President, Law Society. And I'm standing on a unified voice for positive change. Unity is the key aspect that keeps us together as a community. Have you ever wondered that we are united and through unity, it is only that that keeps us together. I'm looking at different ways on how we as society members can be inclusively in every activity that, that includes the society. I'm looking at ways on how best we as society members can use this platform of the society to better ourselves individually. I'm looking at different ways, not forgetting that the major thing is unity. Because where there is unity, everything is settled and everything is sorted. We have different, on my manifesto as Natasha, I'm not going to work alone. I cannot do this by myself. It's not for me alone. It is working with my fellow colleagues to make the society a better place. Looking at symposiums, looking at how best can we use these symposiums. Symposiums are platforms on which different people get to interact with other people. You can attend a symposium and you will never leave that place the same. You get to meet different people. You get to interact. You can actually even get matters there. We are looking at career guidance. Career guidance is key. Some of us are in law school, but we do not know exactly what we are doing. But when you direct and say, you know, as a society, we are going to give people different values. We are going to enable people to be able to identify where they belong. That can work for the society. That can push the society to a better place. I'm looking at different ways on how we as students can actually, actively get involved. We have looked at these sports galas, you know. We have looked at different ways. The government before us, thank you for those that have served before, have set a place that we cannot enable, or we cannot even think of letting go. We have to keep moving. We have to keep seeing that we, we interact with other societies. We make our society better. We are looking at the you that you see you know society, getting in conjunction with other different societies. We have the Uganda Christian Last Fraternity. We have the Federation of African Law Students. 
the law society is to organize funnels. We as lawyers sometimes we are overwhelmed by academics. But when you have this fun night, where people come and showcase their talents, it is a stress reliever. It is an ice breaker. And we have very many lawyers in the society who are actually talented. Take an example of a recently a portal group in my background. The two major actresses actually from law school. That shows that lawyers, we are not only looking at academic excellence, but all around seeing that the society is better. We are looking at different ways on accountability as law students. We cannot work it alone. I cannot do that alone. You are the people that put us into power. We need to come back to you and organize ourselves and explain this and this has been happening. This and this has been in conjunction with our other leaders. I we looking at different ways on how we can organize all these series, speakership series. They help us. They help us. It's not about being in class all the time. It's about exploring and finding out how best can we handle this. And it is not about how much you have. It's not about where you come from. It's not about who, but it is what you can do, you as an individual. I am here to encourage each one of us here that we can actually do it together. I as a focus and Natasha talking about unity and a unified voice for positive change.
to do when it comes to the profession. That's why they still reach out in Tashi Place and Lady and Gentlemen. In the old days, that was the very old days, Lady and Gentlemen. I accessed the law firm and to seek for Tashi Place with The first question they asked me was, What is your name? Who is your father? And who has sent you, Lady and Gentlemen? I knew that I'm not alone who is going through this. That's why I come up to establish, if I'm given the money to establish an internship committee, ladies and gentlemen. This internship committee shall create relationships with outside law firms so that if they are placed, they will communicate to us and they will communicate to you, our members. It is achievable and workable, ladies and gentlemen. Also, the rationale of the internship committee shall be, I mean, it shall guide the members of the society for different modes of applying for, for internships. We know well that there is a specific mode of applying for internship at Majestic Courts. I myself, I did not two ways. I got an opportunity to intern from Kasanga to Majestic Court. Students will know that actually when you apply for internship, for internship at Majestic Court, you need to go through the register. I got I did know.
in those four minutes, I, I, I believe that the loss of service shall be removed. Because I cannot do this alone. And before I continue, I'll pose the question that will you join me in the journey of reviving the society? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you join me in the journey of bringing the audacity of hope back to the society? Let us give up the, 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 our society together. Let us create a much of hope in our new society. Thank you so much. I love you so much. Given that opportunity to present, 
hypothetical questions are questions that are brought that to trigger our minds to, to learn more, to gain more knowledge. Now, when you, when you participate in those mock trials, at the end of the semester, that from all those students that have, you know, preached and have gone ahead to succeed, are able to be awarded on the society level. And that can be an addition, achievement, that once you are looking for a job somewhere, you can be like, yes, I participated in this in school. Now, how do those mock trials work? They work through the guidance of the Guild Tribunal, the Chief Justice and the Justices. And these people will be the people to lead as we do this exchange and exchange. And then it helps to improve not only your writing skill, but even your ordinary skills. That's how best that can be done. Thank you so much. I have read your manifesto. I do not capture anything on accountability. Do you? Yes, this is a factual question. And don't think it's biased. I have listened to it, and I have also read the manifesto. Do you intend, maybe because you were given little time, so you can address us on that. Do you intend to be accountable to the students and how? Thank you very much. I myself, as a, as a person, am accountable to myself and everything I do. That said, being as an individual who is a team, who is a team player and a team leader, it's okay. um, so not captured in the manifesto. Reason being, the team that I'm going to work with is one that in all the manifestos as a part, they capture the aspect of accountability. That said, that is also expected of a leader. If you're, if you're running a corporation like your society president, and you want to live you want to live as president of this civil society, definitely must be accountable. And the situation that we're in at the moment is one that is quite uh, is, is quite dire and is uh, one that is quite not that we've experienced in, in, in a lot of years. So definitely it's not it's not coming to the manifesto, but it's something that I uphold such values and principles and, as an individual, but with the help of my team I believe we shall work together on achieving the accountability and transparency as it was stated in the and and uh, Mr. Eric Roberts in the agenda. And 
how are you going to solve that problem? As I was beginning my manifesto, I stated that our current, our law society, our ongoing law society is facing who has faced uncertainty, instabilities, and difficulties. And Now, when it comes, like the problem, the major problem that has faced this outgoing society, for me, I believe that it was that teamwork. Because I believe that you and I saw the suspension of our outgoing leaders and the appointment of the interim committee. What was the major cause of that? Lack of teamwork. For me, how am I going to solve that problem? Is to make every member on board. I will not let the chairperson of the electoral commission to only appear during the elections. Yes, can you imagine? You only know during the election. Teamwork. If we are moving, if we are the purpose of collecting institutions, the student, all of us, and the society members, shall come on board. All of us as members of society, we shall work together towards achieving that goal. So teamwork is key. Teamwork, and I will see this and gentlemen, you will not see another Italian committee when I become the president. Okay, thank you so much for that. My next question goes to Owen. I clearly showed you that I have the ambition 
will have the ability, with the help of the team that is the right match to ask them, and we are going to rebuild and restore our society. Just like those simple steps, just like those simple steps, but simple steps that matter, simple steps that impact all of us. I hope I'm answering your question. Yes. <laughs> from the audience's reaction, from your fellow candidates who say, your fellow candidates that say, like the society is falling. What are you going to do to bring back the glory of the society? Because this is affecting all of us. Even us out there, who don't want to see the society down and being laughed at. So what are you willing to do as Natasha if you're putting on this? When it comes to bringing back the energy and enlightening back the society, the thing that I'm looking towards or the two things that I would actually think that would work for us that I'm willing to do Number one is to sensitize the students on the, on the importance of being members of the society. The past is gone and the new has come. Yes. What has passed has passed. And leadership is in service, you know? What happened happened and now we're looking forward on what best can be done now. So sensitizing students on the importance of belonging to the society. And we ourselves as leaders being examples to the electorate because it sets the pace for the entire society. Thank you so much. We have received the anti homosexuality bill in Parliament again. Tell us about the history of the anti homosexuality bill. Uh, when it comes to the question of when the bill, what happened to the old bill, I believe that. Uh, if I remember well, the, the first bill was, uh, was, uh, was introduced by uh, Reverend Nkodo. in 
Uganda and Uganda without anything to eat. And yet, seemingly in other areas, people have what to eat. So food and health services, perhaps in Eastern and Western Uganda, maybe on a biggest percentage, we are able to access health services or health facilities. When it comes to the northern parts of the country, and even the deep western parts of the country, people cannot be able to access that. So I think that health and food should be given more attention. Thank you so much. If 
you don't have, uh, if, we, even if we did have our own airline, ladies and gentlemen, the question that needs to be answered at this moment is that what went wrong after establishing the airline? Yes, what was the mechanism of employing the workers that we saw at airline? Why, why is there a lot of corruption at the airline? But when it comes to the establishment of the airline, it was to at the right time. Succession politics in Uganda. Make a fair comment. Predict the situation in the succession politics of Uganda. First of all, we need to understand what is the meaning of succession politics. Yes, Mr. Fred, I'm seeing you are happy when I'm talking about succession politics. <laughs> so when it comes to succession politics, this is a of Yes, and they are asking me to talk about it. Like, what are, the, and what are the components? Like, what are the examples of succession politics we have in Uganda, ladies and gentlemen? We are seeing, we are seeing that we have, uh, uh, we have, among the succession politics, we have, I mean, the meaning of succession politics is that. Yes, we need, we need, let me see you are the president, yes? But when you leave the power you want, again, your son or another person. I mean, you and another person from your family to, to be the next thing. Yes? We are succession politics. We are seeing, we also have the kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, that if, yes, that if the king dies, the son becomes the next thing. Oh, no. Now, maybe, maybe before you go to I need to get to where we go to the king. How, how did you get to the king? Thank you so much. Let me press, let me press the government. Yes? Let me press the government. That if you die, they will want someone from your family to be the next leader. That is not how you got moves, ladies and gentlemen. If that's not how things should be conducted. We need to it. Yes? Not that because you are the president. And uh, not that because you are the president, you want your son to be the next leader of the country. We need the voice of the people. We need the electorate. And they are for the succession politics. Uh, I disagree. In, in, in a reshuffle, the president appointed the professor, the lecturer of economics from uh, Makerere University Business School, called Ramon Gomi, who was a proponent of economics that won. Choose two policies that he has implemented and critiqued. When I was on UBC and NBS, he said the president has waited me to, to come and implement politics that work, uh, policies that work, economics that work. And the, economy, the policies that he personally wanted to focus on was the aspect of coming up with uh, economic ventures that best benefit the youth. That was his first, his first policy, looking at policies that best benefit the youth. And the second one was looking at giving, making sure that the, the, the rural Uganda or the ordinary Uganda has money in their pockets. But let us critique exactly what he has done. In this country of Uganda, we have leaders or we have people with great ideas. But the question is, how many of those great ideas have actually been implemented? Ramadan Gobi is a gentleman of great knowledge, is a gentleman of great wisdom in lines of economics. But his ideas have also been frustrated and his ideas have also not been implemented. Now the question of that I want to ask is, what is the problem with the system? Is, is it the system, is it the individuals, or there is something wrong? But I would think the problem is with the system. And what exactly is the problem with the system? The problem with the system is on the aspect of corruption. The vice that has greatly eaten our community, the vice that has greatly eaten the money that are meant to help the youth in terms of having money in their pockets. The second one in terms of the elderly or the ordinary Uganda having money in their pockets. So I wouldn't actually critique Ramadan's ideas because the gentleman is one that has very good ideas. But the problem is not with him, the problem is not with his idea. The problem is with the system. And the system is one that is filled with vice of corruption. Thank you. I want to know, or want to know, what is your long term or short, what is the long term or short term benefit we are going to gain from giving you leadership as the law society president? How would you use that office in the long term? or in the short term, to impact and make a change 
on the human rights violations that are happening or prevailing in the country. As a president, if elected, providing platforms where people are able to speak about how they have been violated in one way or the other can help to combat these violations. When such platforms are put on board, people are able to speak out about how they have been violated, whatever they have been passing through that is not right. And even through, through very many law students and very many facilitations, as law students, we can not be to find and have a voice for these people that have been violated. That is how I intend to combat this violation. Thank you.
judicial officers of that case expounded on. Thank you so much. It was about an election. It was an election petition, and you were you. Can I say you? But yes, you. You were. Uh, you say the name Yes. Yes. <laughs> that particular person was um, talking about or bringing up points of rigging votes and not being able. Yes. Of, was bringing up a point about the elections having some out practice that led to the results, and he was therefore petitioning for that election to be repeated. Thank you so much. You have heard about Formula One? Yes? Hey, there is a race that has been going on currently, and I think it ended yesterday. The title. What was it called? I don't follow Formula One. Maybe I can substitute that question. The Premier League is a league of English football clubs and they compete for a season. In the current season, which team is on the bottom of the table as of today? Uh, which team is on the bottom of the table of the Premier League? Uh, The Premier League table that team is a uh, Western. Uh, this question is I think someone has said it, but also others, that one, I am a 
our good coordinator. Our good coordinator and coordination is the key. Secondly, my brother has said it is prayer. There is nothing that can defeat prayer. There is nothing that can make us better when we are speaking the same language. The same language comes from us understanding that at the end of all, leadership comes from. And secondly, is that coordinating helps each of us to, to recognize our strength, our weaknesses, work hand in hand, and make the society better. And I believe and I know that we can actually achieve this together. Um, this question goes to you. Just like you asked me a question that when you win or if you win, would I be pressured to work with you? My question is, when I win, would you be in position to work with me? And what best would you be in position to do? What would you be in position to do? And which, 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 particular, which, which particular situation do you consider yourself the best fit to do? When it comes, if you will, shall I work with you? I will strongly say that indeed if you will, if the electorate trusts you in their vote, I will lead work with you. And uh, I happen to hold the first position in the law society of the chairman, Interim Committee. <laughs> that being said, I happen to have talked to one of the former presidents of the law society. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Byron and Mrs. Shama might know them. Might know her, sorry. She's called Council Sar. When I approached Council Sar about the whole electoral process, which will yield into the handle and transition of this government to the new one, she posed a question to me that I'm going to pose to all candidates. The presidents, uh, those that want the position and uh, the others that will be on the cabinet or the executive. She said, um, there are, are many people in the student leadership who want a position over service or have not thought of the service aspect which is sufficient step to be relevant to the body. How sure are you, she posed the question to me that I posed to you, that of the candidates that are offering themselves for service are best or are going to execute service and not hold position, mark you, I'm holding a position that has never been in the law society. The chairman. Nice. So, how are the candidates going to offer service and not just hold position for the benefit or the prestige of the positions they hold? Jonathan Ebert is my name. I have two questions, and they are all connected, that will be answered by two people. One, last year we voted one of the best speakers the society shall ever have. If you have to look at the time that we've been in this campus, and that is right honorable speaker of Misha Society. It is said that Oumu Chishasuza Honorable is no longer in power. No. We got a letter, I 
she was resigning. I did receive any letter that showed that she went back to office. So at least I can defend what I'm saying. I'd like to know, and if, if he's stopping on that, I'd like to know. The people coming for the speakership office, how sure are we that if a person that we trusted, like Susan, reached a point and accepted, how sure are we that they got all those positions? Next. His excellence to be, if God wishes. Drake one in. I I don't think you are lying about anything you say right now. I do not answer about anyone because you don't take it power. So the the challenge is been had not even only in UC but according to the nation, is having people coming into power and not knowing the problems they are going to solve, but they come with a lot of hope and a lot of lies telling people that we support them into power. Moderators here and everyone, protocol observe. This is you're seeing. You're seeing one and is the president. But someone must be seated there. As it was last year, we had High Excellence Liz. She was seated there on such a day. But today we have someone seated at the back in a jersey. Who was, who was supposed to be here? So, Mr. Drake Wale, would you come and explain, because when you come into something, you make a Would you come and explain, in length, because we are having issues of people who represent us, and when they reach, they just do whatever they do, because the society now is in a lot of whatsoever you want, just because, yes, yes, um, people don't know what is on the ground. So, Mr. Drebon, then, would you come and explain why the person is supposed to be sitting there? You sit there and say, and everything that has caused this, and now you're going to solve it to make sure it will never happen again. Because if you just want to watch people into power, and then you have to have a military committee coming at the as leaders, so you can't be into power. Thank you so much. Uh, my question will go to Ned and Martha. Onen, over the years people have been so active in the society activities, but to this day we are just a handful here. How sure are we that you will not be a good old boy seated at the back? <laughs> <laughs> and to mother, you talked about teamwork. Could you at least give us one of the high performing teams that you have led such that we can entrust you with the power? How best are you going to assure us, or how best are you going to show us that resignation is not the best answer for incompetence in leadership? Um, your question was on Susan's resignation. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I credit Susan and I speak so highly of all Mugisha Susan. So with her resignation from the position of speaker, and to think that Susan was failed, Susan did not fail the society, but Susan was failed by the society. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you that in many instances, we go back to Bonnie's question of, of what? What exactly is the problem of the society? What exactly is happening with the society? Ladies and gentlemen, I have to believe that the administration fails the leaders and then the leaders fail the students. That is the question that we always have to ask ourselves. The administration fails the leaders and then the leaders what fail the students. So for me, I am coming to tell you that all Misha Susan did not resign because she wanted to. She resigned because she was failed by by the administration. She resigned because she was failed by the leaders that she was working with and to go back to what has been the potential of this whole debate, which is teamwork. So, as Miss Sandra, coming as you speak at this 2023, yes. I am committing myself. Thank you. 
your manifesto. I promise. Yes. Yes. That once you put me into power, you're going to get a person who is going to fight for you, for your rights, going to fight for the things that we believe are affecting us as those events, so that we do not have a society collapsing because of a problem of teamwork. I believe that if you get someone in the team that has the ability of teamwork to be a conclusive work that will be able to, to bring our society back to life. Thank you so much. And so, so lucky that first of all, first of all, teamwork means together everyone achieves so. I'm honored and privileged to be the first one in my family. So I really <laughs> I was, I was normally, I needed mean, was the Secretary of Women's Affairs, and I'm sure I, I was the leading example to that team. This is my foundation. I worked at the Foundation. It's a, it's a 21st century NGO for raising children. I was. I'm also lucky that currently I am a group leader in my class. And secondly, Mr. Kababa asked me which time when my ju judgment was tested. First of all, anything that is going to compromise my values, there is no judgment. I know what I want. So, if there is anything that is going to compromise my values, first of all, I, I am a strong believer in Christian faith. I believe for love. So, anything that is going to compromise that, no please. I stand for integrity, I stand for kindness, and I stand for love. was one that entailed my ability to articulate and my ability to work together. I'm not here just to occupy a position and here to deliver, and I'm here to live with impact. I intend to have a leadership that focuses on us as students having a vibrant society, and those I laid down in my manifesto. So it's just not me occupying a position. As I showed you the roadmap that I already have when given the mandate, that is something to show you that I'm just not here to occupy the position, but rather serve. The second question asked by Sayana, he articulated and said that some of us run and we're not aware of the problems that society is facing. Um, at this point in time, we all know, and it's quite vivid enough, that the, that the problem that the society is facing is one, we are past a silent society, we have not been active, and that is one huge problem that we all know. So that being the case, he asked the question of uh, why, the question of why, why me, uh, on how, how different am I going to be from my predecessor. Allow me to say this. I'm not someone who pinpoints at people and say this was this person's mistakes and this was this person's this and that. But what I'm, what, what I'm aware of is every challenge is presented to an individual and how they solve it is entirely up to them. What they face as a cabinet is something that they face as that cabinet, but I believe that when I'm entrusted with the mandate as president, you will see a unified voice, you will see a unified society. Thirdly, the question asked by Mr. Arthur. Arthur asked me that how sure am I that I won't be the old boy sitting at the back. I still say this again. Um, I'm not someone who points out at people's mistakes and people's flaws. That is something that I do not do. But I rather capitalize on what someone has done, learn from their mistakes, and do better. And how best am I going to be better is by being a team player and executing my mandate as per the Constitution and working together with the team. So much. Leadership is not about position. It's not that when you are not a president you cannot do these things, you can actually do them. So us coming on board for these positions is not necessarily to, to because we want, because it is only through that position that we can do. It's because of personally as a promoter Natasha, it's because of my deep desire to serve the students at large. So it doesn't go back to the position. It goes back to the person in character. And then about, um, I think someone else asked about the problem. Yes, Council God asked about the problem. The problem is disunity. The problem is us having different mindsets, yet we are leading one body. When we are people leading one body but with different mindsets, we shall never deliver. But when we have one voice, a unified voice, we can actually deliver. There's this famous statement that said that united we 
are divided with. Thank you. I'm a person who has not been holding any post in the society, but I had a drive that with or without power, I will pay allegiance to the descent of excellence in the heart of God. That is the spirit I will still in the team. That let us put people first. Let us always stick on our promises that we made to the people. Let us always deliver as we promised the people. I will do so. I will always inform them and I will always let them know that your voice, I mean, through your efforts, uh, I mean, your efforts put them where they will be at that moment. I will so do inform them to serve you. Um, when it comes to Jonathan, who asks that uh, why, I mean, his resignation is not the best answer to the solution, and how do we intend to go about that? I intend to get mentors who will talk, I mean, mentors who will, who will mentor us to do this 365 days. Thank you so much. Your time is up.